Hello, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to this tutorial today where we will be talking about compound operators. What is a compound operator, you ask? Well, we'll get into that, but briefly, it's essentially a short code in programming that allows you to either increment a variable or decrement a variable at, at a certain rate, or it allows you to do other interesting ments like divisions and multiplications. So they can be really handy and they can actually do some interesting, or they can allow us to do some interesting behaviors. So that's what we're going to look at in this tutorial. Essentially, by the end of the tutorial, you're going to have some more tools in your programming toolbox that will allow you to generate some uh, interesting things with your Arduino code. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first place we're going to start is on the Arduino reference page. And if you know me, I love the Arduino reference. I'm here all the time. We're going to take a look at a couple of these compound operators. So if we click on one, it will take us to the specific reference page for actually four of the operators that we'll be looking at today. Now, essentially, all these operators do is create a shorthand for some expanded code. So let's look at this first example here. We see x plus equal y. I mean, that's kind of like a strange statement, but that statement is equivalent to x equals x plus y. Essentially what we've done is taken the x out of the equation. Now, you might be asking, well, okay, if that's all these compound operators do, you know, what's the big deal? And you know, that's a great question. What is the big deal? Well, to be perfectly honest, there really is no big deal. It's just a shorthand. Now, it could be debated whether or not the shorthand increases readability and understandability or decreases that. I personally feel that the shorthand increases readability. That's my take on it, but you might have a differing opinion. That's cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at an Arduino program where we start using some of these just so we can get a little more hands-on feel of how they work. So here we are in the Arduino IDE. And I'm going to go to File, Examples, Basics. And I'm going to open up Bare Minimum. And what this Bare Minimum program does, it just provides me a void setup and a void loop pre-written so I have to write less. And I like that. What we're going to do is write a program that blinks an LED. And in order to try to take a closer look at these compound operators, we're going to create a variable that adjusts the amount of time that the LED is turned on. So it's going to turn on for an amount of time that is variable, and then it will turn off for a fixed amount of time. And we're going to look at how we can change that on time with these compound operators. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and set up some variables for the pin number and also for that delay time variable. So let's do that. So I'll be using pin 13 and I've called that variable pin LED and I've also set a variable that's going to hold the amount of time that we keep that LED on and I've called it time delay. But now that I think about it, I think I want to call it time on delay. I think that's a little more clear. So now down in the setup, what I need to do is set the mode of the pin as an output and what I also want to do is start serial communications so that we can see the value of that time delay variable change on the serial monitor window. Now, if none of this is if none of this is really making sense to you, go check out some of the other videos I have that talk about all this type of stuff, setting this stuff up for variables and serial monitoring, all that. So let's go ahead and do that. That pretty much takes care of setup. So let's go ahead and get into the loop. And again, what we're going to do is blink an LED. So we need to turn a LED on. We'll use the digital write function. So our LED will have been turned on, and now we want to delay it for our specified delay time, which is going to be the time on delay variable. Let's do that. Now once the LED has been on for that time on delay amount, we will go ahead and turn it off. So we use digital write to do that. And then finally what I want to do is keep the LED turned off for just a set amount of time and I'm going to arbitrarily pick 250 milliseconds. Let's do that. So let's go ahead and upload this and just quickly take a look at the board and make sure everything's matching up correctly. So if we look at our LED, we can see that it's blinking on and off at a rate of 250 milliseconds on and 250 milliseconds off. And that's because we set time on delay to 250 when we began. So now what we're going to do is start experiment with these compound operators. And what I'm going to do is just draw a big long line of the forward slash comments here to kind of delineate where we, where we need to look at from henceforth. Okay. 
So the first one we're going to look at is the plus equals. This is an incrementation operator. So what I'm going to do is increase the time on delay variable by 25 every time through the loop. So what is going to happen here? Well, this is what's going to happen. We are going to add 25 to the time on delay value every time through the loop. Let's go ahead and write that new value to the serial port so we can take a look at it on the serial monitor window. So let's go ahead and verify this and upload it. And then let's look at our serial monitor window. Okay, now if we look at our LED, we can see that it's blinking at that rate that we specified. But as we continue to watch, we see that the on delay time is getting longer and longer and longer. And if you look at our serial monitor window here, you can see that that delay time is increasing and increasing and increasing. So eventually, you know, it's going to get up to a thousand milliseconds. So we've got this linear increase of delay time. So let's look at this same statement, but without the short code. So if we didn't want to use this, and instead we, we could write this. So the question becomes, what is more readable? Is it this line, or is it the next line? Again, the exact same things. And let's just verify that they do the same behavior. And we'll go ahead and upload that and look at the board. So you can see it's the exact same behavior. Again, it's the exact same line of code. It's just a shorthand. I, like I said, I like the shorthand. It's less writing, and I feel like it's actually a little more readable. So the next one I want to look at is the negative sign. So let's go ahead and upload this and, and recall that the time on delay, the default start value, is 250. So you probably already have an idea of what's going to happen here, but let's go ahead and do it, and let's look at the serial monitor window here. So you can see it started at 250, it didn't read out though, then it goes down to 225, 200, 175. And I'll go ahead and reset it on the board so we can look at the LED, it kind of happens quick, but it blinks and then it starts getting, it, that delay is shorter and shorter and shorter, that on period. And then as we get into the negative numbers, uh, it's really not sure what to do and so it's just all on all the time. Okay, so that's negative, that's kind of interesting. Now, you notice we kind of ran into an issue there. When it got into the negative numbers, the negative number doesn't mean anything for a time period. So what can we do to kind of catch that? Well, we can write a little if statement down here that says if the value is a certain number, go ahead and reset it. So let's try that. Okay, so here's my if statement. And basically it says if time delay is less than zero, go ahead and make time delay equal to 250 again, what we had it at the beginning. Let's go ahead and upload that and see if it works. So here's the serial monitor window. You can see the LED, it blinks more rapidly, more rapidly, more rapidly, it gets to zero, and then it starts over again, just like that. Okay, so that's just kind of one way to catch it if, if it goes down. All right, so that's the increment and the decrement. Kind of handy so far. Now what we're going to do is look at the multiplication and the division. So I'm going to change time delay to 2, and I'm going to change that negative sign to the little asterisk sign, which is actually the multiplication sign. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this if statement from delay time being less than zero. I'm going to say if it's greater than 2,000. Now before we upload this, let's change the initial time on delay. I'm going to change it to, instead of 250, I'll change it to 50. And we'll upload that. And then let's look at the serial monitor. So it goes to 100 now. You can see it's multiplying. So what's happening here? Well, essentially what's happening is we're taking that time on delay, which is 50, and we're multiplying it times 2. So the first time we do that, we get 100. 50 times 2 is 100. The next time through the loop, now we have the number 100, and we multiply it by 2, and we get 200. Then we multiply 200 times 2, we get 400, 800. And then you can see that that number starts to rapidly grow. So you can see it in the LED you know, as that time delay gets longer and longer and longer. So let's look at the last one here, and we're going to do division. So again, you're, you know, this is pretty intuitive. What we're going to be doing is dividing the time on delay. We're going to divide it by two every time through the loop. And then that new, divide, that new value is what is getting assigned to the time on delay. Now before we upload it, I'm going to change this if statement back to zero. And then I want this value to actually be, let's make it 5,000. So that'd be five seconds. And then I'm going to change the default start value up here also to 5,000. 
Oh, but you know what I realized? I need I can't have that as zero. I actually need to have that at ten because the division will actually never get less than zero. So let's go ahead and upload that and we'll look at the serial monitor window. So the first time through the loop we're going to be delaying for five seconds and then it gets split in half. So that's 250 millis 200, 2,500 milliseconds and then you can see it keeps getting split in half and half and half and then once it gets below 10 it starts over and so you can see the blink time the on time is changing accordingly. It just starts getting faster, faster, faster and then once we hit that threshold it resets. So what could we do with something like this? Well we could use it to adjust how an LED fades. So let's go ahead and do that. So all I'm going to do is switch my LED from pin 13 and I'm going to change it to pin 3 that will allow me to use the pulse width modulation. So I'll go up here and LED pin will now be 3 and now what I'm going to do is change this from digital right to analog analog right and it will be set to time on delay. And I can get rid of the rest of this code. So now we know analog write accepts a value from 0 to 255. So we're going to have to change time on delay. Let's go ahead and start it at 255. And then what we're going to do is divide by 1.5. And we'll make this less than 2. And we'll set it back to 255. And finally, we are going to want to put a little delay in here so we can see this. Let's make it 100. So you see we can get an interesting effect out of the LED and we can look at the serial monitor window. And we can see it kind of rapidly decreases. So that's kind of a neat, a neat way to fade the LED. You get a little interesting behavior out of it. So hey, that is the tutorial. I hope it was helpful. I hope you're uh, now familiar with these compound operators, how to use them. And if you see them somewhere, you'll know what they do. All right. Hey, have a great day and make sure to do the challenge. Bye.